Hi class, welcome to the online uh, laboratory instruction. We are going to discuss on the urinary system. We have three slides for this session. We have the kidney, urinary bladder, and the ureter. Okay, so let's start with the kidney. So when you are going to look at the slide of the kidney, always start with the outer covering. Okay, kindly follow the cursor or the mouse ah, or the pointer. So this would be the uh, capsule which is a dense irregular connective tissue. Okay, And then in the slides for the kidney, we have two regions. The outer region, this would be the area, would be called the cortex. And then the inner region, we go down, would be the medulla. Okay? So how do you identify the two regions? So the cortex would show the presence of the renal corpuscle or what we call as the glomerulus. Okay? And then the lower portion, uh, the inner portion, which would be the medulla, they are composed of tubules. So we do not see the renal corpuscle. So once you are located in this area, you automatically would say, ah, this is the cortex. Okay. So now we talk about the nephron. So what is a nephron? So a nephron, or others would say the nephron, it would be the functional, uh, structural, and fundamental unit of the kidney. So it is composed of the glomerulus as well as the tubular system. So sometimes in the glomer in the uh, in the cortex you would see these striations. Okay, so these vertical striations, and these are what we call as medullary rays. So this they would emanate from the medulla. Okay. So now let's talk about the nephron again. So what are the composition of the nephrons? We have the glomeruli, we have the tubules. <clears throat> uh, we also would see the presence of the interstitium, which would be the connective tissue surrounding the different structures. And lastly would be the blood vessel. So, let's go into the details of the glomerulus first. Okay. So, the glomerulus would be a, it's a nodular, uh, it's a nodular structure that would be composed of several tufts of capillaries. So, there are around 10 to 20 capillary loops in a glomerulus and this is surrounded by a capsule which we would call as the Bowman's capsule. Okay, so the Bowman's capsule is lined by this simple squamous cells which we would call as the parietal epithelial cell. Part of the Bowman's capsule would be the outer covering of the tufts of capillaries which we would call as uh, which would be lined by the visceral epithelial cells. So in the visceral epithelial cells, you would uh, visceral epithelium, you would see the visceral epithelial cells. So these are the podocytes here. So those are the podocytes. So and in between the visceral epithelium and the parietal epithelium would be this space which we would call as the urinary space or the Bowman's space. Okay. So, and within the stuffs of capillaries, we also would see the stroma or the matrix. Okay, so the stroma or the matrix would show the presence of the cells, uh, which are what we call as the mesangial cells. These are the mesangial cells. Um, and we also would see the endothelial cells, which would be forming or would be lining the endothelial uh, would be lining the capillaries. So this would be the endothelium. 
okay, endothelial cell. Endothelial cell. Okay? Uh, with regards to the pole, there are two poles of the glomerulus. We have the urinary pole, which is this one. Okay, so this is described as the, uh, the end portion of the glomerulus to which it is continuous with the proximal convoluted tubule. So the parietal epithelium of the Bowman's capsule would be continuous with the uh, proximal convoluted tubule. On the other hand, if we are going to talk about the vascular pole, the vascular pole would be where we would see the arteriole. Okay, so this is an arteriole that is lined by endothelial cell. Uh, this particular pole is where you would see all, or find the JG apparatus or the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The JG apparatus is uh, the structure which, which would be responsible for the regulation of blood pressure via the renin angiotensin system. So what would be the composition of the JG apparatus? So we already know that the arterial is there is present and the cells that would be part of the JG apparatus would be called the JG cells. This is the distal convoluted tubule. This is also a distal convoluted tubule. And the cells that would be part of the JG apparatus would be called the macula densa. And then the portion of the glomerulus that would be part of the JG apparatus would be called the extraglomerular mesangial cells, which would be this portion. Okay, so this would be the vascular pole, and this is the part of the JG apparatus. So, with regards to the different tubules that you would see, okay, so mainly there are uh, two forms of tubules that you would see. That would be the distal convoluted tubule and the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, the proximal convoluted tubule are identified by having a more acidophilic cytoplasm. The nuclei, uh, the, the cells, the cuboidal cells that are lining them appear to be larger and they would possess the presence of the microvilli. The distal convoluted tubule, they appear to have less intense uh, color of the cytoplasm that appear to have smaller uh, cells lining them and they do not have the microvilli okay and another thing is that uh, in some of the cells you would see the presence of basal striations in uh, in the uh, proximal convoluted tubule okay so now we go to the uh, ureter. Okay, so the ureter is a tubular organ uh, that would form a connection between the kidney and the urinary bladder. And that is where our urine would uh, pass through. So the lining epithelium of the ureter would be a transitional epithelium. Okay, you have the presence of the connective tissue and you have the muscularis, uh, muscularis layer. And the outer layer would, would be the adventitia. And the adventitia would be composed of fibroadipose to fibroconnect, uh, fibrocollagenous tissue. It appears that this has a, a serosa. Okay, because the serosa would be the outermost uh, covering that would be exposed to the peritoneal cavity. Okay? And then our last slide for today would be the urinary bladder. Okay? So the urinary bladder, this is flattened. Okay? So this would be a big uh, organ, but uh, this is a cross section of it. So what you would expect to see is a, a little bit flattened area. This would be the lining epithelium, which is a transitional epithelium. Okay, you have here the uh, connective tissue. And then underneath, in the middle layer, you have the muscularis, which is 
composed of an inner longitudinal. We have here the circular and then another outer longitudinal. Okay. It appears that this would be uh, presented with, uh, this one is the Adventitia, and this outer covering would be Serosa, okay, which would be exposed to the peritoneal cavity. So those are the three slides that we, uh, we have for the urinary system. So kindly read on the book for further details. And stay safe, guys. Okay? And good night.